All right, case five. This is a nice treat because this is something that at least in my practice, I've only very rarely seen biopsies of, although it's not exactly a rare disease depending on where you live. So this is a case of ORF, also known as ecthyma contagiosum. And don't confuse that with the two other ecthymas, the uh, kind of conventional ecthyma, which I think is usually caused by strep, uh, streptococcus, and it leaves little punched out lesions in the skin. It's kind of like a deeper form of, of impetigo is the way I've had it explained to me, and something I don't see biopsy very often. And then there's also ecthyma gangrenosum, which is uh, necrotic lesions in the skin caused by pseudomonas. But this is ecthyma contagiosum and is actually a viral disease, which is caused by a parapox virus. And ORF is a disease that's, that's most commonly seen in sheep, uh, where it goes by the name in, I think in Australia, it's called scabby mouth. Um, and the, um, in communities, uh, farming communities where a lot of sheep are raised, um, among sheep farmers, they've done some surveys, I think in the UK in the past, and found that over 20% of uh, farmers of, have reported having lesions of ORF uh, at some point in their life. So I think it's well recognized in people that work with sheep um, and in sheep, it leaves this ulcerated kind of uh, polypoid granulation tissue looking lesions around the mouth of the sheep. And then those are weepy and ulcerated. And so if you have contact with those, um, you can get a similar lesion that grows in the skin, often on the hands from direct contact. So the uh, kind of a chain of events is that if you touch uh, a lesion or contaminated surface, I guess, that has the, the ORF uh, virus, uh, you will get uh, about a week later, you can get a papule on your skin, and then that can progress to a pustule or a hemorrhagic blister. And then over time, that will uh, kind of have a depressed center and it will begin to scab and crust, and over a few weeks will eventually resolve and go away. And so depending on where you biopsy in that process, the lesion may look different. But there are a few characteristic features here in ORF. Uh, one of the, two of the most uh, important things, at least when I learned about ORF, is that you have really dramatic elongation of the reedy ridges. The reedy are very long and often thin. And then the dermis underneath has massive edema, often with inflammation and a proliferation of blood vessels. So kind of this reactive angioplasia that, that looks similar to kind of granulation tissue. Sometimes I've seen it so robust. Um, in one other case, I'll show you in a moment, uh, one of the few cases of ORF that I've seen in the past that had areas that looked almost like a pyogenic granuloma or a lobular capillary hemangioma. And in fact, these, uh, these can mimic pyogenic granuloma clinically. So no, no surprise there. So you have massive edema uh, with a brisk lymphocytic infiltrate in this case, a dilated proliferation of blood vessels in the papillary dermis, and then long, skinny, thin reedy. And then often you will also get spongiosis of the epidermis and the keratinocytes will become very pale and, and kind of have this balloon, ballooning uh, degeneration or reticular degeneration where the keratinocytes get large, they get pale cytoplasm, they get intermingled with abundant spongiosis, and then they kind of start to strand and fall apart from one another. So that mixture of large pale keratinocytes with edema, spongiosis in the background, necrosis, and falling apart of the epidermis, all of those things together, however you want to think of that, is often called reticular degeneration or ballooning degeneration of the epidermis. And it's a pattern that is commonly seen in, in viral infections, particularly ORF, and also we can see it in hand, foot, and mouth disease caused by Coxsackie virus, has a very similar uh, degeneration or reticular degeneration of the epidermis to what we see here, okay? So keep that pattern in mind right there. Think about viral if you see that. All right, the, um, let's see up here, I'll let this piece get into focus. And then also you'll get ulceration and crusting of the, uh, of the epidermis as well, as you can imagine when you get this massive edema and the epidermis is starting to fall apart and die. And then there's hemorrhage underneath. And, um, and uh, in this case, there's neutrophils on the surface and also probably some secondary bacterial overgrowth or impetigenization by uh, skin flora bacteria on the surface here, as you can see in any sort of crusted, weeping uh, skin lesion that's ulcerated. All right, so those are the features of ORF. And then the, the final thing is that people often talk about, um, although uh, based on the few cases of ORF I've seen, I think these are kind of hard to find, but there are these small pink or red cytoplasmic inclusions that are supposed to be very typical of ORF. 
But I find that when I've gone and looked at these cases, I have found some things that I thought might fit for the cytoplasmic inclusions, but I've never been totally certain if they truly are the viral inclusion or if they represent uh, uh, red cells that are extravasated and sitting on top of the keratinocytes or degenerated necrotic keratinocyte debris. So I, I can find little pink dots and tell you, oh, look, it's an inclusion. But in my heart, I'm not 100% sure if I'm really seeing the viral inclusion. Again, this is based on only a very few cases of ORP I've seen in real life. So here's a red uh, little uh, area that looks like an inclusion, although this is larger than a lot of the inclusions that get shown in the textbook. I think over here there was another one, if I can find it again, that I thought was reasonable. So if you think this is... Uh, not good teaching or that I don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. Um, like I said, I, I have uh, limited experience with this, but this is a feature that gets taught in books, but I feel like in real life is relatively hard to be sure that you're seeing because there's lots of little pink fragments and dots that we can see in skin biopsy, especially when there's a lot of inflammation and necrosis. See, here's a pink dot. Is that an inclusion? I think that might be, but you know, a dead keratinocyte can look kind of similar to that too. Okay, let me show you a different case. Um, this was one of the cases of ORP that I saw in, uh, in the past, and this one you can see is even larger and more dramatic than the last case, and it has uh, incredible elongation and thinning of the reedy and massive papillary dermal edema that's just like expanded the papillary dermis and stretched out those reedy so long and thin, and then there's a lot of blood and a lot of proliferation of reactive blood vessels underneath this. In this case, um, if I recall correctly, was a patient who was a transplant patient, so it was immunosuppressed, and was um, was slaughtering a, a goat, I believe, uh, uh, doing like halal slaughtering of a goat for a feast that was going to be be prepared, and accidentally cut themselves, and then at the site um, got a really massive lesion of ORF, and we think that it was probably um, much more dramatic in this patient because of their immune suppression. Okay, so uh, this is just another example. And again, look at how dramatic and proliferative those blood vessels are down in the dermis. I mean, you could really wonder about pyogenic granuloma. You could think about Kaposi sarcoma or bacillary angiomatosis. You could think about a variety of other, of other things there. All right, uh, and um, just more views of that. And then here, I believe, there's a convincing example of the viral, uh, pink viral inclusion in a keratinocyte here. I think that's the real deal. That's what it looks like in the book, at least. So those little pink dots are supposed to be the classic finding for ORF. But like I told you, I think you got to hunt forever to find one. And even then, I'm not totally sure. So I would rely more on the other features we talked about. And then, of course, putting it together with the clinical as the patient had exposure to sheep or goats. Um, sometimes in uh, in... The community where I live, we have a rural a farming community, and a lot of times there's like a county fair once a year, a big fair in the town where I live. And uh, I've heard that after um, after the fair, because there's a lot of people showing sheep and um, and a lot of people petting sheep, that afterwards the incidence of ORF uh, will uh, will uh, increase, and people will sometimes see ORF soon after that fair. So it depends on the community you live in whether or not you might see this and when you might see it. So that's, I think, a very uh, real deal, convincing example of ORF. So uh, something we don't see very often biopsy, at least.